Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Dart tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use the core libraries of Dart to build backend servers. Dart is very much a batteries included style language. This means that there are all kinds of different features that are built directly into the core library that you can use to build out very practical and scalable applications. Dart also features some very nice frameworks to help facilitate this process. For instance, there's a framework called Aqueduct, which makes use of the Dart isolate pattern to allow you to scale out your web application infinitely. Today we're just going to be looking at how we can build a basic backend server using the core Dart libraries. And then later we'll talk about building client-based applications and looking at frameworks and stuff like that. So for this application, we want to bring in Dart Async and Dart IO. We need Dart Async because a lot of the functions and objects that we're going to be running return futures and streams. And we want Dart IO because this is where all of the input output functionality for Dart resides. This includes functions that allow us to erect TCP and UDP style servers, as well as basic HTTP style servers. Let's start by instantiating a new HTTP server object. So here we can create a server object by awaiting on HTTP server.bind. This is a constructor that allows us to specify an address and a port that we want this server to bind to. In here, I'm just going to use 127.0.0.1. This is just localhost. And then I'm going to specify port 8080 for the port for this server. Also notice that this is an asynchronous constructor, so it returns a future HTTP server. So we need to await on it so that we can properly get back the server type. When we execute this server, we want to be able to basically tell the user that they've started the server. So we can create a simple little print statement that says listening on localhost, and then we can get the port by calling server.port inside of the string. So this will just say listening on localhost port 8080. Now the server object is essentially just a stream. It's a stream of HTTP request objects that are being passed back and forth through the server. Each of these requests also has a response built onto it as well. And we can use these requests to decide how the server will react based on various different parameters of how the user is reacting with the server. So for instance, if we wanted to make it so that on a get request, we get a specific piece of information, we could do that. For now, we're just going to say for all of the requests, write a response where we write a bit of text that just says this is some text, and then we close the stream, which is the response. So the server itself is also a stream, as I mentioned before, and that's why we can just listen on it. The response is also a stream, and that's why we close it like this. So now we can launch the application. You can see here we get our print statement. It says listening on localhost 8080. If I open a browser in localhost 8080, we get back this is some text from our string, which we've just pushed to this response. It's also important to note that no matter what path we add to this localhost 8080 address, we will still get back the same response because we've said for all requests, send this single response. All right, so with this, we're able to write a string back to the client that's reading this information, but we can't really do much else. If we try to say insert HTML tags into the string, they'll just get pushed out without being parsed. So for instance, if I just put in some H1 tags around this text, the text itself will come out with those H1 tags around it on the document. And you can see that here. So it says H1, it doesn't parse it because it knows that this is just a plain text response. Let's adjust this server so that we can actually serve a file to the user. So I'll create a new file up here and we'll just use the file object to create this file. And our file will be called index.html. 
and it will get this from the root of our project. So from outside of this bin folder inside of here. So we want to create that file now. We say new file index.html and we'll just create a simple HTML document using Emmet. So I'll just create the document here. I'll name it something like Dart example. And inside of the actual body of this document, we'll create a div, then an H1 that just says hello there. Then we'll have another div inside of the div where we just say here is some text. We'll have a line break and then it'll say here is a link and we'll surround the link with an A element with an href that just points towards the pound sign. So now let's change how we're listening on the server. We can use a listener like we're doing here or we can just use the await for loop. So we can say await for var request inside of server. So for each request inside of the server, we want to do something. And then inside of this await for loop, we'll just check to see if our file exists. And the file exists function returns a future, so we need to await on it. If our file does exist, we can print out that we're serving this file and we'll print out the file's path. Then we want to take our request and take the response that's attached to this request and change the content type which is in the headers of this response to content type HTML so that the client knows that it's being served a piece of HTML. And then after changing the content type headers, we want to open our file with the open read method and then we'll pipe the data from the file into our request.response stream. That way it gets streamed to the client and then the client will be able to display the file. So now if we run our application, you can see we get this listening on localhost 8080 like before. And then if we open up the actual address inside of a browser, it will say serving index.html. And so inside the browser, it will look like this. So it'd say hello there. And then it'll say here's some text. And then we'll have our little link, which we can click on and it does nothing. And like before, we're making it so that any request sends back the same response. So no matter the route that we put in here, we're still going to get this same piece of HTML. Let's add some error handling to this application. So we'll surround the server itself in a try block. So first we need to create the server variable outside of this block because it's lexically scoped. If we don't create it outside of the block, then we can't access it outside of the block. So we create our server variable here and then we can say try HTTP server dot bind. So we try to bind it on the address and if this fails, then we get back an exception which we can then print out. So in here we can say something along the lines of failed to start server with the exception. And then we can call exit negative one, which will force the application to quit with the error code of negative one. Then down inside of where we're reading through all of the requests in our server, where we're opening the file, we surround this in a try catch block. And we want to say, okay, try opening the file when we have a request. And if the file can't be read, then we'll just print out couldn't read file. And then of course, we'll also exit with negative one. Now outside of our if statement, we can add an else clause. And this will happen if the file doesn't exist. So here we can print out that we can't open the file because it doesn't exist. And then for each of the requests, we'll respond by changing the status code to a status not found, which is a 404 status code. And then we'll close the stream. So if I go in here and I delete our index.html, when we run the application and if we try to actually get the file inside of the browser, we'll get back this can't open file statement because the file doesn't exist anymore. Thus far, all of our server examples have made it so that we serve one specific thing for all of the requests that the client makes. So now let's make something that's more dynamic. Specifically, we'll make it so that our server serves the files based on what the user is requesting with the route that they're requesting in the browser. So here we have the basic server template that we've been using thus far. We just have the try loop and we're binding it to the local host and the port 8080. And then we have this little catch block just in case. And then we have the little print statement to tell it that it's actually running properly. And then we have our await for loop. 
In here, we can print out request, URI, path segments, and last. What this does is it takes the path that the user is requesting, the URI that the user is requesting, and splits it up into strings and then pushes that into a list. And the list is this path segments variable. We're able to then get the last item inside of that list by calling this last method on top of it. So when we run this application, if I go to index.html, it will automatically pull out that string and then we can use it to name a new file. If I make another path that's maybe a little bit more complicated, so here we're saying localhost 8080, then we just got a bunch of gibberish in here and then we've got test.txt, you'll see that we just get the final part of that URI. So first let's alias our response into an HTTP response by binding the request response stream to this response variable. Then we wanna make sure that all of the methods for the requests that get sent into this server are get methods before we serve the files. So here we can say if the request method equals capital get as a string, then we can do various things. Let's get our file name. So we call request.uri.pathsegments.last to get the file name. And we put this into a string. And then let's check to see if our file name contains .html at the end. So if it doesn't contain .html at the end, so we can say file name equals file name concatenated with .html. And this will make it so that all of the files that the user requests from the server will come back as HTML documents. Now we can actually create the dynamic file by saying file file equals new file with the file name inside of it. Then we wanna to check to see if the file exists. If it does exist, then we can just open and read it to our response, otherwise, we want to be able to make a new file and then serve it to the user. So inside of this first if statement, we can just say file open read and then pipe it into the response. And then inside of our else statement, we can say file open write. We can set the mode to file mode write so that we're actually writing into the file. And then we can write something like h1, this is a new file, and then close the h1. Then let's open the file with open read and then we can pipe it into the response stream like we're doing up here. All right, so now let's run this application. So inside of the browser, if I go to index.html, you can see that we get our string back, but it's not actually formatting it with the HTML. So it's creating a new file called index.html based on the path that I've put in here. And it's reading in the string that we wrote inside of the server, but the browser doesn't know to read this as HTML. So to fix this, all we have to do is set the content type of the response to be content type HTML. So up where we're aliasing our response to the response variable, we can just add a cascade operator, get the headers and the content type, and then set it to content type.html. So now if I rerun this server, you can see this now reads as HTML, and now I can just type in random files. So let's just type in a random name, and this will read out as a new piece of HTML. And you can see here that that piece of HTML actually gets created here. And we can come in here and we can edit this piece of HTML if we want to as well. Let's put, say, an H2 tag in here, and then we can add some stuff to it. And if we re-request it, it will grab that HTML file and read from it. All right, guys, well, I hope this tutorial gave you a good feel of how to write a server inside of Dart. One of the coolest parts about how Dart treats its servers is the fact that everything is a stream. And this kind of feels a bit like how Elixir treats servers, where you have this stream and then you just augment it with various different plugs. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.